In this video, we're going to talk about the order of an element. So the order of an element. in a group G. So we'll start with a uh, definition. So definition. So the definition of order is a little bit delicate. So if G is a group, so if G is a group, and little g is in G, then we say, then we say little g has what's called finite order. So finite order. if there exists a positive integer n, so if there exists a positive integer n, so a positive integer n, such that, so st means such that, g to the n is equal to the identity element. So when you raise it to the nth power, you get the identity element. So an element has finite order if there exists a positive integer such that when you raise that element to the nth power you get the identity element. So if we can find such an integer, so if such an n exists, so if we can find such an integer, so if such an n exists the smallest such one, so the smallest, the smallest such n, in other words, the smallest such n satisfying, satisfying g to the n equals e, the smallest one is called the order of g. It's called the order of g. The order of G. And we're going to denote it as follows. So denoted, denoted little o of G. Some people use uh, different notation. That's fine. We'll stick with the little o for, for order. If G does not have finite order, so if, if little g does not have finite order. So if it does not have finite order, in other words, there is no such n, we say that little g has infinite order. So infinite order. Let me go ahead and underline that. And the way we denote it, so denoted And you have little o of g equal to infinity. So that's the definition of the order of an element. Let's go ahead and look at some uh, examples where we um, see what the orders are. So example. So let's look at maybe the set G. This will be a group uh, of non-zero rational numbers, so Q star. So this is all of the non-zero rationals. So non-zero rationals. Okay, so non-zero rationals. And here we're just going to uh, look at you know regular multiplication. So times, it's just multiplication. So the operation is just regular multiplication. So this is a group. And uh, let's see, so negative 1 uh, is an element in this group. And it has finite order, has finite order. Because, say, um, negative 1 
to the 102, it's an even number, is equal to 1. Right? 1 is the identity element in this group. So n here is equal to 102. So we have a positive integer such that negative 1 to that positive integer is equal to 1. So it has finite order. Uh, you'll notice that the order of negative 1 is actually equal to 2. And this is because 2 is the smallest, right, it's the smallest positive integer, positive integer, such that negative 1 to the n, or I'll just use 2, equals e. So here n, n is equal to 2. So there's infinitely many numbers that you can use here, right? You can use 102, 64, 78, but the smallest one, the smallest positive integer for which this is true, for which g to the n equals e, that's called the order. So the smallest one is the order. Uh, what about the order of three? Well, how would we figure that out, right? We would have to look at like three to what power is gonna be equal to one? <laughs> well, n has to be a positive integer, right? So if you use zero, it would work. But remember, order is positive. Let me scroll back up and, and show you. So, yep, if there exists a positive integer n, right? So, um, so in this case, the order here would be infinity, right? Because there is no positive integer for which this is true. So the order of 3 uh, is equal to infinity. Likewise, the order of 8 uh, is equal to infinity. Right? The order of 8 is equal to infinity. Let's look at another example. How about, um, let's look at the set G, so Z sub 21, right? So here, uh, circle plus will be the uh, binary operation on this group, and um, it will be um, addition modulo 21. So addition modulo 21. And um, the number 6 is in this group. So it's 6 is an element of this group. And if we look at 21 times 6, that's basically we're raising um, 6 to the 21st power. So when you're looking at powers, if it's multiplication, it's g to the n equals e. If it's addition, it's ng equals 0. So this is going to be 6, circle plus, 6, circle plus, dot, 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 circle plus, 6. And there's 21 copies. So there's 21 copies of 6, right? And this is actually equal to 0. Okay, this is equal to 0. So 6 has finite order. Okay, because we have a positive integer n. Here our n is 21 such that when you raise it to the nth power, um, you get 0, which is the identity. Uh, but note, uh, 6 times 7, okay, 6 times 7, that's going to be 6, circle plus 6, circle plus dot, 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 circle plus 6. Um, 7 is going to be the smallest uh, positive integer for which this is true, right? 7 will be the smallest positive integer because this is going to be 42 and then modulo 21. 21 goes into 42 um, two times, the remainder is 0. So the order of 6 in this case is actually um, 7. Right, so actually 7. So something to keep in mind, whenever it's multiplication, it's g to the n equals e. Whenever it's addition, it's n times g equals 0. Very, very useful to know. Here's another example. Let's look at, um, say, g. And g is going to be the general linear group. I'm going to use new notation here. So gl 2c. So the 2 represents um, the dimension. So this is all 2 by 2 complex matrices with non-zero determinant. So non-zero determinant. Okay. 
And let's look at an element here, say um, a equals, how about this one, negative 1, negative 1, 1, 0. So if we look at a squared, that's going to be negative 1, negative 1, 1, 0, times negative 1, negative 1, 1, 0. So I'm going to do the multiplication here. So the entry in the first row, first column, that would be negative 1 times negative 1, plus um, negative 1 times 1. Running out of room here. Uh-oh. And then this would be negative 1 times negative 1, so 1 plus 0. So just put a 1 here. And then this one here, likewise, would be uh, negative 1, and this one's negative 1. So this would be a squared equals. The first entry here would just be um, would just be 0. There's a, there's, a, there's a 1 here. I messed up. So this is going to be 0. Uh, the second entry here would be 1, then negative 1, and then negative 1. But it turns out if you look at a cubed, if you look at a cubed, a cubed would just be a times a squared. So this is negative 1, negative 1, 1, 0 times 0, 1, negative 1, negative 1. And if you do the multiplication here, you get the identity matrix, which we can denote by i sub 2, right? 2 denotes the, helps denote the dimension. So in this case, the order of a is equal to 3. So uh, an element has finite order if there is a positive integer such that if you can raise it to that power, you get the identity. So if you're dealing with multiplication, that means g to the n equals e. If you're dealing with addition, that means ng equals 0. That's it. I hope this video was helpful.